What up, what up, what up, guys? Thanks for tuning in, wherever you're tuning in. Bon Joseph here. Thoughts from LA to the UK. September episode something I don't even know don't forget to rate review subscribe if you guys are checking us out on the uh, podcast side of things with Apple or Spotify we appreciate that it helps keep us ranked and um, yeah we're gonna talk a little bit of this talk a little bit of that today I got um, Mr. Uh, Nasty Naz from Uwe joining us today from Beer, po- Beer Talk Podcast I got it right this time and I got uh, yeah. Dr. Sonny Chima Anya with us today. Word. Yeah, yeah I like that, man. Intro music. I'm sorry, Naz. I don't got any intro music for you, bro. <laughs> but, it's cool. Uh, I was vibes into it. <laughs> we're going to get into um, what are we talking about today? A little bit of Kanye West. I'm going to get a little entertainment in there for you guys today. Mm-hmm. And we're going to talk about lockdown again, man. It's time to uh, stay in the house again, it looks like. Kind of, sort of. I did come across this story um, while I was getting set up that I thought was a bit interesting, and I haven't run it past you guys. Maybe uh, let me see what you think about it, because it's uh, a bit interesting to me. It's a little bit messy. Um, let me go to the change in view here. I don't know why we're looking at that. There we go. Um, these 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 Amish these Amish guys. Um, this is kind of heavy to start the show off with, man. I don't even know if I should have done this, but um, yeah, I don't messed up, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get it in. So these two Amish dudes, they well, we're waiting. Raped their sister, right? So these guys are 22. Let's see if I can find the story real quick. 22 and um, it's very close to that age, and. They had a 13-year-old sister. Oh, wow. Sorry, she was 12. How many was a while beforehand, anyway? Yeah, I know, right? She was 12. She was 12 years old when they raped her. These two boys, um, 18 and 22, Aaron Schwartz and Petty Schwartz, Petit Schwartz, I don't know, these Amish names. And they were given 10 years suspended prison terms as part of a plea agreement in Springfield, Missouri earlier this month because um, the prosecutor said these two young men would have been eaten alive in the state prison system. So for a prosecutor to even have the unmitigated gall to try and get two rapists time served or probation or whatever it was that he got him, I think is just appalling. And his, his rationale for doing so was because these two guys, they're, they're, they're Amish. They don't function in the way that normal or mainstream will say society functions. And to put them into that type of environment would cause irreversible damage. Not to mention the fact that they raped their sister And if I do recall correctly from reading this article, there were two other brothers that raped her as well. They were younger. So these were young, young kids. So there were four brothers. And um, to put the uh, icing on this messed up cake, they got her pregnant and she just had a baby and she's 13 years old. And one of the four brothers is the father of the child. So gentlemen, speak on that. What are your thoughts on that? Should these boys have been given time probation or or whatever it was that they called it um should they have been given prison terms should a plea agreement even have been discussed for something so disgusting in my opinion no what are your thoughts Nash? i feel like i need a bag to vomit in for starters and then secondly um what messages does that send out to other fucked up can i swear you say whatever you want to say. I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use the f bomb in this situation. I'm use, normally, I try to refrain. Normally, I have a potty mouth. That's why I have to refrain. But um, boy, um, where do we begin? Uh, straight to it. What message does it send to others that might have these sadistic, twisted thoughts in their heads? They feel like they get special treatment because it's so fucked up that they they get protection from it. 
you know, there's no punishment, there's no incarceration. Well, what, what, what is the plea deal? What are they actually getting out of it? They got. Or what is the punishment for them? They got 10 years suspended sentence. Uh, they got 100 hours of community service, a $250 fine each. And um, yeah, so they got basically, they got five years probation. They got a 10 year probation, which means they'll have to do half. So they got five years probation, 100 hours of community service, and a, a, a fine of amount that most people probably walk around with in their pockets. Yeah. Exactly. Well, you put it pretty clear and crystal there. I'm just shocked still. Sorry, I jumped out to speak first, but I throw him in the cage, man, with a lion or a tiger. That's what I say. Or send them... Yeah, they definitely need prison time, and everyone needs to know what they did. So they get the punishment from the law and and within... Well, the community the has mates. said the commu- the community that they uh, exist within has said that we will punish them. They haven't said what they were going to do, but they've said, you know, we will exact justice on these uh, misguided youth. Uh, they're not even youth, but apparently the prosecutor was arguing that because of their age being, you know, twenty or, or eighteen and twenty, they mentally aren't at that age, so they're a little bit behind mentally. So he didn't think that they should be put into any sort of incarceration situation. Do the time for doing the crime. Um, they need severe punishment. I want to know what their, um, their what their lifestyle views as punishment. Is it like some sort of physical punishment? Is it what is it? Either way, whatever it is, something like that. There's not many things that I feel. Would, you play uh, fight poison with poison, like violence on violence, mm. but something like this, I'm, I might be like, I'm speaking for myself here, but yeah, I think they need, they need a beat down. I mean, like, I don't know, man. I, I just, I'm going to stop holding back. I'll beat the fuck out of them, basically, if I saw them. And, um, you know, and I'm generally quite composed and, and something like that is just, disgusting i just feel so sorry for the sister who is supposed to see them as their see them as role models supposed to see them as their protectors and instead gets violated to the highest degree and now she has to stick with that reminder by having this child stroke sibling that she has to raise and god knows how that child will come out anyway and how deformed it might be but Mm. um she just had the baby she's she's had the child last uh recently i don't know within the last couple weeks we'll say so as far as i understand the child's healthy uh at at least right now who knows what's going to happen down the line good for the baby yeah Mm. um chima from a medical standpoint what are your thoughts on on um i know you're not a psychiatrist but what are your thoughts on not putting they're they're adults i can't even say they're kids but individuals into a, a situation such as a prison due to their lack of mental uh, awareness, we'll say? Um, um, I mean, uh, man, I'm really not qualified to comment on this. Um, I think what you need to consider, though, is I understand the Amish community are sort of removed from, uh, let's say, 21st century living. So the first thing that immediately springs to mind for me is um, this is like a safeguarding issue. Why, why, why was this young girl not protected from these boys? What kind of supervision have they been given? And then I I don't know in terms of what kind of uh, upbringing these boys have had uh in terms of you know what values and i'm not trying to disparage anyone here i'm just trying to come to terms with uh how such a conclusion can be made um because it does get very very difficult when you start talking about uh mental capacity um i mean there's no doubt that 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 they should be punished and they should be um you know, uh, put in prison as far as I'm concerned. 
but clearly something you know that kind of decision doesn't get m made lightly and I, I wonder if the, the, the young girl has been taken away from the family now and has been put in some sort of um care i don't know so no. the the whole thing is just the whole thing is just very sad to me i mean mm -hmm. i don't know how they do things in um, america this is in america right yeah it's in missouri missouri yeah you yeah. said yeah, yeah. You did so um I, I do think that you know mental capacity does need to be taken into account um you know, I don't know enough about the case. Like I said, I'm not qualified to comment. Mental capacity does need to be taken into account because you wouldn't, you wouldn't treat someone who had the mental age of a 13 year old, uh, even if they were, even if they were 20 years old, um, uh, you know, physically, if they had the mentality of a 13 year old, I sort of think that that has to be taken into account when you're attributing blame and trying to um you know help people but obviously the whole situation is just horrendous horrific and ultimately it sounds like there was a severe lack of supervision and guidance for these um boys that did this absolutely horrible thing you know mm. um mm. so i mean i don't know it's really hard for me to to comment on but i do think mental capacity is something that does need to be assessed and taken into account when uh, figuring out how to deal with the situation. That's just just my 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 thoughts listening to the the story. No, I agree. I agree. Um, we have certain certain um, uh, I can't think of the word that I want to use, but we have certain protocols, I guess, in place for situations like this in certain states. But there's no blanket, you know, set of rules that exist across all fifty states. Where, because we have a lot of times in the U.S. where we have a lot of mentally ill people that are in jail because they don't have, um, you know, the, the proper psychiatric facilities to send them to. So they mm -hmm. end up having yeah. to house them in into the normal jail system. I don't know if it's the same here in England because I'm not as familiar. I'm not that I'm very familiar with the U.S., but I've seen it on TV. But I don't know. Do you know if it works like that here as well? I would say that not as much, but I am aware, I am aware of, um, you know, uh, mental health uh, issues and, and it, them not being treated properly. And then people ended up in prison. And actually, now that I've said that, you know, a wide, um, uh, there's, a, there's a high prevalence of mental health problems in the prison system here in the UK. So obviously, to a certain degree, we, we do have that here as well, if it's not as obvious as uh, you know, it is in America with obviously the fact that access to healthcare is is a lot more patchy in America than it is here. But no, yeah, now that I come to think of it, actually, a wide, a big proportion of people in prison have mental health problems. And if you really want to drill it down, it could be that 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 those mental health problems haven't had the appropriate care, and they end up in the justice system. You know. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I, I hear that. I hear that for sure. Well, hopefully, um, uh, uh, she's going to need tons of therapy. So hopefully, she can come out the yeah. other end of this a little, a little better. So um, anyway, I hope she gets it. Yeah. Yeah. So best wishes to her. Um, let's get into the more uplifting shit, man. Let's talk about coronavirus. So um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uplifting, bro. So uplifting. <laughs> I mean, 2020's left us in that oh, state where anything's man. a blessing. Wow. <laughs> so just when we thought maybe some sort of semblance of normality was making a return to our society, we, we, we knew this was a, a extreme potentiality eventually down the road. We Here we are. It's, what, damn near October. And they've been talking about second wave since... April, right? So apparently the cases have been going up in the UK. We've had two, I don't have the number in front of me, 200,000. Maybe that's the US number. Where are we? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 41,000 plus deaths in the UK, 400,000 confirmed cases. The US has had 200,000 deaths, but we've gone up here. It's been going up and up and up. So um, 
So we've got this new rule of six that's coming into play. And if we don't um, adhere to that, they're talking about potentially stricter lockdown policies. Um, stay your ass at home and work from home if you can work from home. So a lot of you people that thought you were going back to work and were dreading it, you get a reprieve. Everyone's got to wear masks now if they're in the shops. Here's something that I'm not really sure about, and hopefully Dr. Chima Anya can shed a little light on this for the uninformed like myself. What is up with places being closed Two at 10 o'clock? Hour, right? Well, no. <laughs> that one too, but the 10 hour, oh, 10 well. o'clock. Uh oh, my is you, is Sorry, bro. Is you you had, you you were majorly lagged there. Yeah, my so uh, we was... you froze at six people. Right. <laughs> or six a group in a group. All right. Am I back on now? You're back now. You're back. You're back. All right. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah. So what what I wanted to ask um the the good doctor here because he might have a little bit more information or than we do. He's like, oh shit. Um, what is the no, purpose? Good, of, good. <laughs> what is the purpose? of not allowing us to stay out at 10 o'clock you know the pubs and all these service industries have to close at 10 and we can end up just going to somebody else's house to drink so does the coronavirus is the shutdown for business at 10 or what up with that yeah you know what see i, I see a lot of people say that you know what i'm saying i see i see the memes of like people dressing up in 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 school uniforms saying coronavirus don't recognize me if i'm in school uniform <laughs> the thing is, like, let's let's be honest. Let's really be honest, right? You close the pubs at ten o'clock. It's gonna have a widespread effect on consumer behavior. So already, people are scared. Like, we might not be scared to go out, right? But something like this, an edict like this, comes out. All of a sudden, uh, people are gonna change their behaviors. That in itself uh, is gonna stop people going out mingling spreading the thing another thing is, is the decisions you make as well you know if 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 the pub i mean having been an avid party goer like myself right you know that if the thing locks off at 10 right yep you are more likely to not go all out as if uh it's going to go on there's there's far less leeway for you to to fall into that trap of oh just another one and then, and then it's, then it's half 10 and then you're like, fuck it. I'm sort of half committed anyway. So I may as well go all out. You know what I'm saying? All right. of that behavior that's going to get cut out. Now, I'm not saying that, um, I'm not saying that this is, there's any study to show this. And I think it's, it would be naive to expect that there is a study that, that, that would show this, but it's, 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 it's almost like when you raise the we, um, minimum unit pricing, yeah. So if you change if you change the, the 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 cost of alcohol just by say five p, yeah, and you increase it, right? You think oh five p that's not going to stop anyone from from buying it. But the studies show that alcohol consumption goes down massively. That's why the all the alcohol companies have been um you know what's the what's the word lobbying against raising the minimum unit price of alcohol because these tiny little changes on population levels affect people's behavior. Now, whether or not coronavirus is actually spreading in pubs and restaurants, uh, we don't know about the evidence of that. But what it looks like at the moment is that hospital, and I'm not too worried about cases increasing, but what I'm worried about is hospital admissions and ITU beds are filling up. So they're reacting, you know, and they can't, they can't shut everything down again because that would be an absolute disaster. So they're trying to pick something. And, and, and I think that it might be politically motivated, to be honest, because I remember a few months back, everyone going on about, well, well why have you opened the pubs? Why have you opened the pubs? Shut the pubs, shut the pubs. So this is like an like a easy, easy, easy win for them politically. But I, I can sort of see what they're trying to do. And... At the end of the day, if if that's as far as they go, they put a 10 p.m. curfew. I, I'm I'm I, I'm sort of happy with that because they could go a lot further hmm. and and cause a lot more damage. I feel you know what I'm saying. So if we can do this 10 p.m. thing and then naturally whatever the, the numbers plateau out over the next few weeks, I'm like happy days personally. I'm not too upset about the 10 p.m. or the rule of six thing. You know what I'm saying? That's just how, how I how I stand on it. And I and I want to say. I'm a GP. I'm not an epidemiologist. I'm not a virologist. 
Um, I am not claiming to be a world authority on this. The world authorities on this have showed time and time again that they don't know shit. So <laughs> you, you may as well just listen. You may as well listen to someone with some common sense. You know what I mean? That's so, why we got you here, man. Because it's like you preach. can say, look, I don't know what y'all talking about. <laughs> but, um, I just got Does a text that... message that says Tesco is out of loo roll again. Here we go again. So <laughs> y'all wilding what? the fuck out already. Knock that shit off. Okay. They, Haven't we no, learned they... nothing? There you go, bro. There you go. But that's consumer, um, that's consumer confidence. You know what I'm saying? People are retreating back into their houses, which is what, what they want because they want to, and I'm not saying it's the right thing to do because, you know, I've been on, I, we've been here before. You know, I remember when I was talking to Naz about going to Legoland and I was like, nah, bro, go out. Do your thing. Like, I'm not a fear merchant, but it's like at the end of the day, they're seeing the numbers go up and they're scared. It's winter's around the corner. Yeah. So, they they do they have to do something. They have to do something. And I don't think 10 p.m. and 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 the rule of six, uh, which I misinterpreted actually. I don't actually think it's that bad. It means that you just can't go out in in bigger groups than six. That's all it means. Right. But you can't you can't have a I can't have a Halloween party at my house like I wanted to this year. Not that it's I would have <laughs> had six. Not that I'd have had six people come way to fuck out <laughs> the <laughs> country. But if I knew six people that would have come, I can't have six people pull up. So, but they, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. That's that's it's crazy. Um, didn't the pubs decide they were going to? And I, and I might have been wrong about this. I don't know if it ever happened. But when I first started coming here back in, oh like 2006-2007 you guys drink a lot here y'all you you guys put american cities like to shame like y'all y'all go ham when it comes to your drinking especially the women they'd be out there going fuck fucking wild so they were keeping the pubs open or at least entertaining the idea of keeping them open later so that people yeah, wouldn't yeah. wouldn't do what you were saying what but the opposite actually where it's yeah, yeah, yeah. and so i might as well chill out now at 9 30 they were like you know, shit is closing at two. Let me get six of everything, you know? So, I, so we're hoping it has the opposite effect. I don't even know how that, that extended hour thing at the pub even ended up panning out. Cause I don't, I don't, you know, I'm not out like that now. So. Um, yeah, I don't, yeah. I remember what you're talking about and I don't, because we have a big problem with everyone would get the last drinks in before, uh, you know, last orders or whatever. Mm. And then they would go out and, and mad antisocial behavior, blah, blah, blah. I don't think they, I don't think they went through with it to my knowledge. Mm. Um, but I, I think it, the, the time frame is very different. 11 o'clock is very different from 10. It's very, very different, bro. Yeah. I, oh yeah. Like, like, but, and, but and, what's going to happen? What's going to happen to the guy? Sorry to cut you, but what's going to happen to the guy that likes to party? The guy that's like 10 o'clock, man, the, the party. If I like to go out and it's Friday, Saturday night, I'm 20, 20 years old. And this is where the largest spike, in my understanding, has come from is this age group of like 18 to 25 or something like that. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm sure you have a more accurate statistic. But younger people that are now supposed to be going hey. back to university, the girl that moved mm. that lives right next door to me, her parents just got uh, a house out here because they didn't want her staying on campus. So mm. she's got, you know, she's got this spot. So what happens with when I'm 20? I'm used to going out every weekend and you just started to give me a little bit of that party back. And now you're like 10 o'clock when you're 20, you're not, the party's not over at 10 o'clock, man. The party is over when I cannot function anymore. When I'm waking up and I'm in the bushes or, you know, I'm being extreme, but the party goes Yeah, on. I know what you're saying. I you know, know what you're saying. saying? Like I when I was going saying, bro, out, I was going it, out. I think it just starts earlier. Yeah, it's just going to start earlier and you're going to just pass out at 10 p.m. That's what's going to happen. Day drinking, bro. Wow. Day drinking. <laughs> That's the problem. Okay, but you okay, let, right. faced this before. I was just going to say this. Uh, hold your thought, though. Um, we've been through uh, uh, this before. So we've found ways to kind of find ourselves, channel it and f find a medium so for us it might be doing more podcasts than ever before or it might be um finding another hobby that kind of you can do by yourself and you know because i'm really sociable i used to go out gang of gigs all the time you know like live music that was all me and 
hitting the gym a lot, um, adapted to working out from home, buying a few equipment, um, being a bit more more grounded and just a bit more like zened out a little bit more. It's either that or go loco, you know, go go nuts. So it's one of the two. And if we can, we've done it before, we can do it again. I know teasing people isn't good. And some people, especially the age group you mentioned, they may be not, I'm stereotyping this because everyone's different at different, different age ages, but a stereotypical age group between 20 to 25 or university students there, they're still maturing and the way society is built for them is, is to get fucked up and <laughs> have a good time. So of course yeah, but, it's harder for them. But hold on. <laughs> Didn't I, I, I saw, I saw the um, data that the younger generation, they are, they aren't going out and getting fucked up. Like we were getting out. They're staying home and like doing knitting and shit like this. You know what I'm saying? Like pussies. Really? But, but, yeah, <laughs> it, 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 bro. Listen, but what I was going to say was, okay, what do you think they should do? Because they should probably do something. If, if the, if the, if everything is going up, ex, you know, well, I they, don't know if it's exponential yet, but if they see that it's, it's going up and, the, and, and most importantly, not just cases, because I don't believe in that. Most importantly, they see the hospitals mm. are actually now seeing patients who are sick. What should they, what, what, what would you like them to do? Go ahead, Naz. I'll I'll go after you. <laughs> <laughs> no, Naz is down. Naz is look. down for this. He I said he's going to adapt. He's happy. He's happy yeah. for the 10 p.m. Yeah. thing. You know what I mean? All right. So he's happy. from my perspective, I, I've, I've, for a long time, I've been a conspiracy theorist. All right. Okay. Here we go. I, I'm <laughs> always down when I hear Bill Gates saying we're going to reduce the population. This is not sustainable. That is the. I was going to start a new podcast called Buzzword because, but sustainability is like the fucking buzzword. Why are you looking directly at the camera now when I start talking conspiracy? I see you. <laughs> <laughs> so my point it's is, happening. my eyes are going to start flickering now. <laughs> my point. Yeah, that's what happened last time. You started that lizard people shit, and then everything <laughs> went all cuckoo la la on me and shit. Um. I feel that we don't we don't ever get told everything, and that's just the, the nature of business and and government. Of course, right? We, yeah. That's just that's just how it is. Um, so I'm I'm always taking things, you know, thinking things are are at least another level to two levels worse than they indicate. And when I see people handling hazardous materials and people that are handling chemicals and they're wearing full suits and all this shit and then they're telling us wash your hands and wear a face mask like that's the key i'm thinking something else is probably going to happen down the line maybe this is just like the, the first round they know it's coming back because that's how viruses and medicine works it mutates it comes back stronger with a with a, with a bigger punch so i planned my move to where I am now based around that mindset thinking, all right, I need to get the fuck away from London because when this shit kicks off again, cause it's going to kick off again. I want to be somewhere where I can get Tesco delivering my food. <laughs> I don't have to worry about them not being able to make it internet being strong enough to where I can function from home and the shit broke up on us already tonight. So we're going to have to have a little talk with Vodafone tomorrow. And, you know, basic stuff where I can function and not be around a whole lot of people. So I'm so, cool with so it. So hold on, you've, you've, you've moved. Have oh, you yeah. moved? I'm, I'm two hours away from where I was before, bro. I'm way oh, up Oh, near. shit. Where are you now? I'm not almost, almost not from where we were last at. Are you not still at where, you, you, where we last saw you together? No, I'm not. Yeah. Sure. I just left about... Have you moved? Yeah, oh, I mean, shit. Sorry. I thought you were still there. <laughs> I was going to say, your, your setup does look different. I was like, how does that work in that room we were in? That's no, a different setup, right? Yeah, it's different. I'm in, I'm in almost Peterborough now. I'm like two hours from you guys. Bro. I'm up in Oundel now. Bro. Yeah, I'm up in the... In the shit like, in a tear right now. There's like farm and all kinds of shit around me. It's, it's lovely. So, um, so, so my point is, is, yeah, I agree with you and definitely support, you know, any measures that we need to take in order to head this off, you know, to nip it in the bud, because we didn't do that last year. We didn't do it. And I mean, we sat around until I'm trying to think of when I last worked and I was in the studio, probably like mid March doing some 
ADR work for a film. So that was the last time I worked, worked. I mean, I did some a project a couple of weeks ago, but that was like the first time I left the house to work. And I mean, studios where wow. we're recording from home, we're doing all this voiceover stuff from home. Um, I'm, I'm hooking up with Warner Brothers Studios and they're connecting me in through Source Connect. They're listening to me do, you know, the stuff live in the studio and you're doing that lizard thing again. I love it. Um, <laughs> so I know that it's an eventuality. That's another reason why I'm like, all right, I go somewhere where it's kind of quiet, which I kind of failed at that one. But um, so, yeah, I think they should be implementing as much as they can within reason. Like you said, it being political. I definitely agree with that because I know that they got molly whopped for shutting the economy down and they didn't know what to do. They, you know, we've never dealt with this before. Right. So the normal yeah, bias is gone. That shit's gone. So they're like, we need to shut everything down. We need to everybody keep your ass at home and stop buying too much toilet paper. You can only have two cans of soup, you know. So here we are for round two. I'm hoping that people would have acted a little better. Now I got to go on Costco online and get some toilet paper delivered before people start tripping again. Cause I ain't got, but you know, a couple rolls. So <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I get it. And I hope that we come out on the other side of it better, but like you say, we're coming into cold and flu season anyway. So if we're coupling it with that, I think we might see, this might be ugly. It might be ugly. It's a heavy hitter. Mm. It might be ugly. What's the what's the, the chat, what's the community chatter in in? I mean, you're you're in you're on the on the on the front line more or less. I mean, I know you're not in a hospital. At least I don't think you are. But no, nah, I'm a, I'm a GP. I'm a GP. Right, right. So, what's the chatter in in your circles about this? Because you're obviously going to have different conversations than I'm having with, you know, my my people. I guess. Yeah, it's, it's really difficult, man, because, you know, it is like people are in, in two different camps. There's the people who are like, yo, you realize you look at the data, lockdown made absolutely no difference. <clears throat> you know, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And then there's the other people who are like, oh, my God, you're so uh, irresponsible, you know, lock down everything and <laughs> don't go anywhere and don't see anyone. You know, I think it's almost it's almost like more like what kind of personality do you have? Depend right. because because there's no facts. There are no facts. There are no facts. And just it's opinions. Un unprecedented. Mm. Exactly. So you know, um, I, the, the the thing for me is is as you know where I'm working, when coronavirus was bad, right in like March April time, people the hospital wasn't overrun. People weren't dying like flies. Uh, I can't say a big proportion of my patients died. Obviously, we, we do know that I'm not trying to say Corona isn't real. Corona is very real. It's very serious and we should take it serious. And at the time when we didn't know what we were facing, I was like locked down, locked down, locked down. But six months later, we've seen all of that. And, you know, obviously we've had tragedies like rest in peace, Thai, obviously. But it didn't pop off the way that, the, 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 the global media made it, you know what I mean? So I'm just like any doctor that I see that I work with, I'm just like, how can you, how can you really still think? And I know, I know we don't, you're not supposed to work based on anecdotes. Right. Mm. But it, it's like uh, the man it's it's really difficult. So there's a wide variety of, of, of opinions there, even amongst doctors. So you've got half of the doctors who are like, you know, fuck all this lockdown shit. And then half of the doctors who are like scared. I mean, I think part of you, of people's personality who become doctors are, you have a certain element of OCD, you know, you want to be able to control everything. But I think that's for me anyway, my personality is like where, where the, where the error lies in people's thinking, thinking that you can control everything. I think we've become so used to controlling so much that when something like this comes along and, uh, you know, it's out of our control. We just go fucking nuts, bro. And we just don't know what to do and, you know, panic and buy bare toilet paper. You know, <laughs> one of the doctors said, yo, man, coronavirus is so clever. And I was like, coronavirus is not clever. It's just like, it's just like a piece of RNA or whatever, right? That, that drifts along according to evolutionary pressures. The thing is, is we're not as smart as we think we are. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's the biggest problem I see with but. this whole... 
with this yeah. whole shit. You know what I'm saying? So I can't, I honestly can't tell you really what, you know what I mean? Because it's, like I said, it's all chaos. No one knows what the fuck's going on. You know what I'm saying? And, but we do have to be careful. We do have to be cautious. You know, I would never advocate for, for um, not being cautious. So that's why I'm not too mad at 10 p.m. or, or this uh, rule of six. I'm not too mad. Let's, let's see. Let's give it a go. Uh, and let's see how the next few weeks go. And if, you know, if people still start really dropping out of ITU. But, you know, l- like we already said, in winter, that happens. Mm. You know, when, when, the, when, the, when the temperature changes by one degree, I can't remember, but thousands of people die on, on, in a normal year w- without any coronavirus pandemic scandal. That's what happens. So it's like now I'm looking at all these figures and I'm thinking, well, how much of this really is just the normal seasonal uh, variation that you get? And how much is, is, is it because we shut down the hospitals for four months and people who needed treatment couldn't get treatment or they were too scared to go and get treatment? How do you account for all of that in your statistical analysis? Mm. You can't. You yeah. can't. You're you just can't. making it shit up. Yeah. You're just making it up. You know yeah. what I mean? Depending mm-hmm. on your personality and your, your personal bias. So that's why I'm like, oh man, I, to be honest, I switched off a bit because I was like, you know, I, I mean, I'm trying to stay up, up, up to date, you know what I mean? And do what's right and, and do what's best. But it's, it's so hard, man. It really is so hard. Just a bit you switched off. <laughs> I agree with you completely. We got to take a quick break and we're going to pick up on this conversation when we get right back to it, guys. Don't go away. <laughs> These ones, or these ones? It's all an episode of Intervention. <laughs> and I know I'm fine. Illinois, Mr. Robert Bobby McNeely. He is going to join us tonight. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. My name is Elaine Zhang, and today I am here with Eli Seal, documentary filmmaker. I need more. Welcome to The Only Way is Linda. Today, I have a really special guest here. somehow it's under control then it's gonna have to be big again but my dad knows my views on this and um you know if i'm paying for this i'm crossing out some names <laughs> that's, that's, that's another debate yeah well the big wedding the big weddings are done like you said the 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 wedding planners are suffering the venues are suffering everybody that's planning yeah. on having that type of thing is going to suffer i know when i was looking for a place to move to they were i would hear some uh estate agents would say you know we're following guidelines we can only have one viewing a day or something like that or every however many hours and then there were some that were, I was walking out and it was somebody walking in, you know? So it was, mm. there's no consistency. People are getting sick. And, um, you know, as a result, and we're, we're just going to have to deal with it accordingly. There's nothing we can really do about it, is there? So hopefully uh, we come out the other side happy and healthy. And um, that's it. You, you'll be married. And Chima will be able to reopen his practice and start seeing people again. And no, then, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're seeing people, man. We're seeing people. Are you not going to get hey. shut down though? Like, are they? Didn't they? Didn't they tell, no, tell you guys to go home before? That that is a big contentious point for uh, GPs at the moment because uh, at the beginning of last week, some some horrendous person uh, wrote a letter in the Telegraph about GPs not being open. GPs are open. We see patients face to face. You know what I mean? So don't let that misinformation be spread. We are open. What 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 I'm looking forward to is being able to do gigs again freely, and there being mm. lots of lots of gigs that I can do. You know what I'm saying? Right. But GP practices are open. If you need to see your GP, call your GP. They will see you. If you need to be seen, because a lot of things can be dealt with over the phone or via video. You know that Libby what, app, right? Do you think? Well. Do you think they're gonna keep them open though? Like, cause uh, were they? Of course they will. Were but were they closed before? What was the situation with that? They were I never know... closed. They were never closed. Really? They were... Yeah, they were never. They were just closed. restricted, right? Just restricted was... to need. Mm. Exactly. It was just that you you couldn't just walk in like before. You could just walk in. Mm. Obviously, they had to control. They had to make sure. So if you had like COVID symptoms, 
then uh, 111 was dealing with that, you know what I'm saying? And 111 could uh, send people to your house because obviously you don't want people coming into a public space if they've got COVID, right. you know what I'm saying? But everyone else who didn't have COVID, you had access to a, a, a GP. And if you needed to be seen face to face, you were seen face to face. They were never closed, never. It's like a common misconception that people have. I, you know, I think maybe people might have thought that, at least why I might have thought, thought it, was I would be driving past the hospital where, where my house was. There was a hospital right in, in Ascot, and the hospital was closed. So I know that, that we're hearing, you know, there's, there's, there's a, this overflowing with people, and part of that was because they were closing certain hospitals, but I assume they did that because they were moving staff to locations where there might have been a, a bigger need. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. So, so for example, some of the hospitals that perhaps were doing outpatient work that um, wasn't urgent, they might have temporarily moved the, the staff there to other other places in order to prepare for uh, COVID. Yeah, and things were, um, uh, de- uh, shall I say, delayed or rescheduled, but never closed, bro. And and GP practices definitely. We didn't have any of that. We were we were always open. You could always call us. And we would see you if you needed to be seen. And end of story. You know what I'm saying? Like, I promise wow. you that. That's facts, as we wow. like to say. Facts <laughs> with an X. Facts. Right on, man. Well, that's crazy. I didn't know that. So hopefully they keep you guys open again. I got to find We will you. be open. We will be open. Don't <laughs> we worry. We never close. We're 24 hours. So, um, yeah, that's wild. We're almost out of time again. So we only got about eight minutes left. Um, we don't have time to get into any more topics and this stupid thing was set to record when we went back to the second call and it didn't. So we missed like the first 10 minutes of all of that shit we just talked about. So mostly NASA's uh, wedding crap, which is absolute shit. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it has nothing to do with you. <laughs> it's probably to your benefit. So um, I wanted to get in on this Brianna Taylor settlement, but we'll pass on that one for that's a bit of a longer topic. But we can talk about Con Yeezy before we oh, go. Oh shit, the Louis Vuitton Don. Oh god, you guys. So, that was a fire mixtape, man. Do you remember that one? Nah, no. Louis Vuitton what, Don. What, what was on that mixtape? Well, it was just jumping on other jacking for beats, basically. But okay. that, uh, 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 I'm kind of Louis Vuitton down, but my mom first, so she Louis Vuitton mom. That was actually off of a freestyle. Um, okay. And then he dropped in Rap City, I think, and then he went on to uh, College Dropout, I think. But, All right. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, I didn't he hear that mixtape. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. I re- well, I realized I realized something the other day. I can't diss Kanye West. Kanye West has put thousands of pounds in my pocket so <laughs> i can't i can't diss him i can't diss him oh yeah no matter what he does no matter what he does i realized yeah. it that i was like hold on hold on if Kanye didn't make the tunes he did i would be like thousands of pounds poorer than i am so shout out to kanye for oh, kanye that. thank you man thank you bro <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently he's, he's got um, this video on on he put up on his Twitter account, man, where he's got yeah. his Grammy in the toilet and he's pissing on the Grammy. Uh, I loved it, man. R. Kelly it. was like this. R. Kelly was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. we we are still squeezing content out of R. Kelly. Twenty years. This is like the. <laughs> this is probably one of the greatest pieces of event history that has taken place that has provided more content than any other event in pop culture i can't think of any other ones that are still relevant um so yeah you ruined (laughs) yeezy's tied into this universal music contract apparently he's got 10 contracts with them and, and he says they're just bleeding them and he's now reaching out to like Taylor Swift, who we already know what he did with her and all these other musicians, Bono, et cetera, trying to get retweets and Drake and Kendrick. Um, he's, you know, says that, you know, they, they make you sign your life away. They sign your rights away. And he says, without your masters, he's trying to get his masters. Taylor couldn't get her masters. That's why he was calling out on her to try and help. You can't do anything with your own music. So I'm from the outside and we got like six minutes left. Um, so real quick, I know that if you don't have your masters, that you don't have shit. Even, you know, we all know how Suge did Vanilla Ice allegedly. I know how that works and I'm not even in the industry. So how is he not aware of this as smart and as clever as this guy is 
musically. What are your thoughts on it, Chima? Go. I, th I, th I think, I mean, like I said, I can't criticize him too much, but briefly, I agree. It's like, this is not new news. And, and, and furthermore, furthermore, actually, would you be the superstar you were if Universal didn't put all this money behind you? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I don't, uh, like I said, I can't just Kanye. Kanye love, I love some of his music. I follow him. But I'm like, come on, bro. Like, your, your mom was what? She was a professor? You didn't get a lawyer to look at the contract? That's on you, bro. You signed that shit. They made you a superstar. They're the reason Yeezy is worth a billion. Stop, stop, stop. For me, I'm not interested. I don't give a shit. But I like six, six billion, bro. You get, you got I, it wrong, bro. There's no what he told Forbes. I'm worth six. Shit. Six billion, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I like the fact that he pissed on the Grammy, though. I like that. I was like, yeah, yeah. because the Gram fuck the Grammys, bro. Since day one, fuck the Grammys. It's a shame that it took him so long. You know what I mean? Like someone who's allegedly supposed to be some, he, he was supposed to be, he, he, he postures himself as some sort of philosopher, right? Yeah. And, and it took you this long to realize the Grammys are shit and, and, and fucking universal business practices are a bit dodgy. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, they made you the superstar you are, bro. So, uh, you know, it's like, you know, figure out with the lawyers. You know what I mean? That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Naz, two minutes, go. Yeah. Well, um, I recall Taylor Swift re-recording her album um, and then selling that to avoid um, losing ownership. So I, to my, that question, the question I have is, what happens to the already recorded album that is being distributed? Does, do you stop the distribution deal and that's when it just stops being published? Do she have, does she have the right to do that? Or is she just contending with her own album? <laughs> so if there's a, a new released version against the old released version and they basically sound the same, that, that's what um, I'm worried, confused about. I don't know what else to add to the Masters bit, but I found it funny that Mace came out of nowhere and demanded an apology <laughs> off of Kanye. And he got one. He actually got one. That was the best thing about it. Because he was, he, if anyone doesn't know, he, he obviously dissed Mace for basically leaving at his pinnacle, if you would. Mm. And um, uh, for, for going for, for, you know, for, for bigger things for him, which is the faith. And, um, you know, now he's like saying, hang on a minute. And now you're trying to do this shit to me? I demand an apology <laughs> and my family demand an apology, a public one at that. Nice. <laughs> so, yeah, and he got one. Nice. But, yeah, I mean, that's it, man. Like, read the fine print, right, Chima? Read, yeah, read your fucking contract, man. Facts. And, and don't, don't fucking sign it. If you do, read it, don't fucking sign it and then see how far you would have got in your career, bro. No, no, do you know right. what I mean? And if, like, yeah, and if he did, then just shut up and start owning new stuff then or buy it back. I guess he can't buy it back. That's what he's moaning. Yeah. 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 Well, we're going to leave it at that. And Kanye, I got a little message for you. Industry rule number 4080. Thank you. Industry people are shady. That's you know what I'm saying? saying? Come on, <laughs> bro. He, I know he's no, he knows this. He knows this. He's got, he's got no one to blame but himself. So um, thanks for listening. I want to give a big uh, thank you to my two brothers here in, in London and Surrey for joining me today. I appreciate you guys taking the time. I really, really enjoy our conversations when I get you, get you guys on. So Me too, man. Um, me too. Great, great to talk. To do our show on a more regular basis. And since we're going to be in the house anyway, by the looks of it, we're going to be able to do this show every week uh, pretty soon, goddammit. So um, come with your topics and uh, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe. Hit us up at V3TV if you're uh, on the gram. And uh, if you want to holla at us, info at V3TV.UK. Check out all of us all over the internet, Beer Talk Podcast. Uh, check out Chima Anya's music. Um, we got them on Vibes TV. Uh, check them out on YouTube and all over the place. We're out of here. Thanks for listening. And we will see y'all when we see y'all. Peace, peace, peace.